Hey guys, happy new year. Um, oh. which, what's the last few weeks been like, um, just to deal with all the COVID issues and then cancellations and to finally be able to have a game on the schedule and, you know, fingers crossed everything will work out for Sunday. Um, it's definitely has been frustrating and it sucks, um, just for games getting canceled and obviously not being able to play and just practice, practice, practice. Um, and I think we're just ready to play somebody else um, besides ourselves and our practice guys. But <clears throat> I think in the long run, it has been beneficial getting a chance to work on things that we haven't um, been able to work on so much because we've been playing. But now I think uh, we're just ready to get into a game flow. What sorts of things were you really able to focus on with you know this extra time you had? I think just moving on offense. I think a lot of the times we can get stagnant um, and people are just confused on where to go or, you know, with the next move. Um, so just really moving in communication has been a huge emphasis um, since you've been back from Christmas. Caroline, anything to add? Uh, no, I think she covered it. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Charlotte. Hey guys, happy new year. Glad to see you both. Um, Kind of to follow up off Alexa, just what it's been like to get back into having five to, to seven players this week and actually kind of get to go and, and play with each other again after a period of time without without that. Um, it's been good. I think, like you said, just kind of getting into like a flow of being able to play together and working on stuff like little things that we don't have time to really work on. So it's been good having more people in the gym. And I know for when a couple of us weren't here, um, you know, just having not just barely five people in the gym um, was tough and it's tough to practice like that. But the coaches don't really um, switch up how they coach at all. And we're gonna, they're going to, you know, we're going to run the same drills um, and the practice plan is going to stay the same, whether we have two people out there, four people out there, or we have all of us out there. Uh, so we, at, at the end of the day, we got to push through because um, the game is like that. You know, the game is filled with ups and downs. You don't know what's going to happen, um, who, who we're going to need to step up. Um, so it has been a test um, with everything just going on. But I think we've all handled it pretty well. Avina, how difficult was this for you just having to go through this last year? And I mean, Caroline, you went through this probably in your own way in that high school season, but just having a, a pause again and, and just taking you back to the feelings of last season? Um, I feel like at this point, I think all of us are kind of at a point where at least I am just kind of, it is what it is. Um, there's not much that we can do. And a lot of the things that happen is out of our control. Um, so for me, especially, I, you know, I'm not going to get frustrated with things that I can't control and just trying to reiterate that um, to everyone else. Uh, you know, I, I get that as frustrating and obviously we want to play games and we want to be together and those who had to isolate and things like that. Um, but that's just life, you know, and the older you get and you, you start realizing things like that and no one can, no one can predict COVID or who gets it and who doesn't get it, um, who, whose games get canceled. All of that is kind of really just out of our control. So just kind of just keeping our, um, our mental stable um, and where it needs to be. Pat. Yeah, um, how are you guys handling the pressure of, you know, UConn doesn't lose to unranked teams. UConn's never out of the top 10. UConn hasn't lost two games in a row since 1993. And obviously you guys are facing challenges that are a lot different from those other teams, but do you use it as a motivation and how do you handle that kind of pressure? Um, it's definitely a lot of pressure, um, but at the same time, like you said, we definitely use it, have to use it as motivation. Um, there is a standard here um, and there's a huge just expectation to live up to um, that no one in the country has. So for to be in our position, um, it's it's hard, but at the same time, no one is no one's feeling sorry for us. The whole world is cheering that, you know, UConn's down right now, that we lost two games in um, you know, the middle of the season. <clears throat> so really it's just time for us to turn it up. And we know that. Um, we know that every team, um, you know, wants a pizza, wants a piece of us, um, and we're we're gonna get everyone's best game, <clears throat> regardless if we're winning, regardless if we're losing. But I think we gotta we gotta just get back to UConn basketball, um, just doing the little things, 
um, that separates us from everybody else. Sorry, I lost track of who was next. Jackie. Hello all, thank you so much uh, for taking the time. So I'm curious as to how maybe you feel like the group has been able to, to grow and, and learn since the fallout of the Notre Dame uh, game. I mean, I know it's been a month since that game, but maybe how do you think that as people, you all have matured um, through setback after setback? So yeah, it's the injuries and then now you have the, the COVID pause that you've had to deal with. I'd like to hear from both if that's okay, because it's a personal thing. Um, it sucks, it really does. Um, mm -hmm. Just to have certain people out, we didn't think we're gonna be out. Um, you know, obviously coming into the season, you think you're gonna have all, what, 14 of us started out, all 14 of us, you know, then we have transfers, injuries, um, whatever the case may be. But I kind of just touched on it earlier. It's, <clears throat> it's the way life is, you know, it's filled with ups and downs, things that are going to happen that you never going to thought of that were going to happen. Um, and when it rains, it pours. So when one thing happens, you know, 10 other things are going to happen as well. Um, but it's how, how can we still, in the mix of everything, stay together? And I think, um, that's what we've been trying to figure out, um, all of us. And it's been hard for all of us, not just the people. Um, you know, it, I, obviously it's hard for the people who can't physically play on the court, uh, but it's hard for the people who can as well. So just trying to adjust um, and trying to figure out a flow and a way um, of how we do stuff and how we're supposed to get it done without having others there. Um, so I, I think it's just all part of the process. Um, and at the end of the day, we just got to get it done. So, Carolyn, how have you tried to, you know, stay together? I mean, I know it's difficult because this is, you know, you're very new to this team. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely been an adjustment since the game, but I feel like everyone's kind of been able to step up and like take on different roles and be able to add to like things that we've lost. And so I think we've really been able to grow as a team because of it. And, and also just another one, uh, Gina was talking about how you all are developing a new identity um, amid all of the, the adversity that we talked about. Um, so what exactly does that new identity look like and how do you think it will continue to develop? Um, I think that's one of the things that we're still figuring out. I don't think that we know concretely um, what our identity is yet, uh, but I think as the games go by, um, it's going to be more evident to us and um, to just people watching in general and our coaches as well. Right, right. Final one for me, uh, Avina, you talked about how it's really important to keep your mental stable uh, right now. So, so what are some of the, how do you do that? What are some of the methods? Um, I think just, um, mm -hmm. For one, just making sure you you know you're you're getting what you need to do in practice, um, doing the things you need to do in practice, you know, just each and every day, and that's all we've been able to do um, is obviously is practice. Um, <clears throat> but you know, take advantage of when we're not at practice. Take advantage of um, certain off days of just you know whatever whatever you need to do. If you just you need to sleep, you need to you know catch up on whatever school whatever, you know, talk to your family back home, whatever, you know, whatever you need to do that makes you feel like, okay, like I'm good on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, and it's different for, for everyone. I might need to do something and Carol might need to do something different, you know, that gets us ready for what we have ahead of us. Um, but the biggest thing I think that we all know is that we all have each other. Um, and we're all in each other's faces 24 seven here in the apartments, um, we're always in, in and out of each other's rooms, uh, just making sure, you know, everyone's good. Always texting in the group chat, um, if something's going on, someone's got some tea. Um, and then I think it's really cool. We always watch the games, NBA games, other college games, even men's games, all go into each other's room and just, just chill, eat, um, and just watch basketball. I mean, that's, that's a fun way to kind of just unwind, but still kind of be involved. 
Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Maria. Hey guys, it's good to see you. Um, I got one for E and one for Caroline. So Avina, um, obviously it's been a challenging few weeks, but you are the mom of the team, in some cases the grandma. So how are you looking to inject your leadership um, on the court to, to help this team as we kind of spin this forward now and look ahead? Um, I think just using my voice. <clears throat> I think that everyone kind of knows um, what I say is um, it, it holds a lot of weight to it. Um, so I just got to be very particular in the things that I say, because I know that they're listening. Um, and, but at the same time, I got to know when it's time for me just to sit back and watch, um, you know, being a good leader too, and just kind of just sit back, and watch, you know, reading people and understanding, um, you know, what everyone's kind of just going through and then give my input in the end. <clears throat> but I kind of, kind of said it earlier, just, you know, making sure that we're staying together, whatever it may, whatever it may be. Um, but I think everyone does a really good job of it in itself. Um, and it's kind of just checking up on each other, you know, not not even basketball wise, but just off the court, like, hey, you good? Um, you know, let's let's the four of us, let's go get some ice cream or whatever it may be, you know, just little things like that. Um, so we're, we're staying connected. And if people want to talk about certain things and obviously, you know, every, everyone is here for each other. So it's not even me, but just making sure that everyone is just staying in tune and no one kind of just gets lost or distracted um, just mentally or, or alone. Um, there's a, you know, there's a couple places and just being older, I've been through it, um, with injuries, just with basketball, with off the court stuff, you know, there's, you get to a point where you just want to be in your room and just sleep or just be alone. Um, but at the same time, knowing when there are times that's good for like, for, for doing that. And there are times, like, okay, like I shouldn't be alone. I need less, like, let me get out. Let me be around my teammates. So just kind of making sure that everyone is just okay. Thank you. And ice cream sounds good. Um, but Caroline, <laughs> moving over to you, you know, um, we were talking to coach earlier and he said that whenever there are injuries on a team, obviously people need to step up and, and some players emerge. And he said, you know, you've been one of them. How do you feel like you have sort of seized the opportunity you've been given with the minutes that you've had and been able to make the most of them? And how do you feel like you've progressed on the court? Um, I think, like I said earlier, with a lot of people being out, everyone kind of has to step up. So I kind of just saw it as a challenge where, like, it's next man up and you kind of just have to, like you said, seize the opportunity. And then the more, like, you're out there, the more comfortable you get, the more confident you get. So I think that's just um, been able to help me. Um, just to follow up on that a little bit, um, I remember, like, you telling me a few weeks back, you wanted to be like more assertive on offense and also just focus on the defense. Um, how do you feel when you're, when you're out there? I know it's been a couple of weeks now, but like, do you feel like you've, you've done that? Um, yeah. I mean, I still definitely want to really work on my defense and I think there's always like ways you can improve, but um, I think from the beginning of the season, yeah, I feel better about it. Thanks. Roger. Amy, you said that there have been some positives to come out of this and that the, the flow of the offense, the motion in the offense looked better. But how, how do you tell that when you're going three on three rather than five on five like you would be in a in a game? And are there any other positives to come out of this? Like, is your shot looking better? Is, uh, you know, Kristen shooting the ball lights out in practice? Any other positives you can give us? <clears throat> Um, I think it's almost harder when we're playing three and three and four and four, having to move and having to be in the same defensive spots and, or offensive spots as if we're playing five on five. Um, so I think when we get five people out there, it's actually going to be easier um, than it is when we play three and three and four and four. Um, but it's been it's been tough. You know, it's been forcing us to talk, um, which that's been a big problem for us, um, just our communication and on offense and on defense. And that's one thing that we ourselves now we talk about often in the in the in the um the locker room that like hey the coaches are getting on us but they're not wrong like you know we we really don't do the things that we need to do and i think uh over this break we've just been emphasizing on hey like you know let's just li listen and lock in 
Um, <clears throat> but no, our bigs, I think what's really impressed me, our bigs um, have been doing amazing. Passing, shooting, um, from the mid-range threes uh, with no hesitation. And, and not a lot of big guys can do that. And I think that's going to help us just with our offense as well as um, just getting it flowing. If they're able to knock down outside shots, um, you know, however many feet just from three-point range, like I said before, um, it's just going to open everything up for us. So could one of the positives that come out of this be that maybe Aaliyah looks more comfortable out there at this point and she's just been able to settle in? Um, Aaliyah, yes. Liv has been doing a great job. Dork has been doing amazing. Dorka's shot looks really good. Um, every time she shoots it, I think it's going in. And Liv's the same thing. Um, so just everyone, they just, everyone just looks more comfortable. But I think for me, particularly just watching everyone, our, our bigs uh, really have been taking advantage of our break since we've been back. Thank you. Mike? Get hey some guys, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Avina, you mentioned uh, oh, yeah. ice cream. This might sound ridiculous, but there hasn't been a game in three weeks. I'm wondering what uh, both of your favorite ice cream flavors are. Um, please tell yours. No, I don't have one. Maybe. What's my favorite ice cream? <laughs> cookie dough. I, I guess cookie dough. She likes a mint. I don't. Okay, <laughs> I do like mint, but I'm just not as picky as her. I'm not picky, but chocolate. I can go with straight chocolate, maybe chocolate with some cookie dough pieces, you know, flare it up. <laughs> I, I asked because you, you mentioned that, and Gina was saying earlier that given what college basketball players are having to go through and have had to go through the past couple of years, it's tough to find joy in anything. Vina, you talked about staying together and finding ways to have fun, but how do you, how do you think you'll look back on this chapter of your lives as something like, man, we just had to manage it and get through it? Or will this, can you look back on this as truly a, a happy experience? This is something, um, actually, I think about often, I get to be able to tell my kids one day, like, you know, I, I had to play through COVID. We don't know what that's <laughs> like. Um, so just little things like that. So definitely, i um, not trying to dwell on the situation. Um, obviously, COVID has just been affecting everyone around the world. Um, and just, I mean, it's like I said before, you can only control what we can, can control. There's a lot of stuff that we can control. Um, so just over my past experience, I just try not to dwell and um, feel sorry for myself because, you know, things aren't going the way that I thought they were gonna go. <clears throat> so just, I mean, kind of just like you said, just trying to find the light, the light in things, kind of just trying to lighten up the, um, the mood or the energy, whatever. Liv had just told us up in meal, like, hey, you guys want to go sledding? Like, just doing little things like that. You know, it's, it was a blizzard here. Uh, you can't really do anything, can't really go anywhere. So yeah, of course, let's, want, we're not going to do anything anyway. So little stuff like did, that. Did you end up going sledding? Oh, well, that's after this, so. Okay, cool. We'll Good luck with that. Thanks. Have fun. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Alexa. Yeah, Vina, you, know, you can answer this, I guess. Um, Gina oh, said that we'll be seeing some of Nika um, this weekend. And so now that she's going to be taking on a larger role with Paige out, um, since I guess they both kind of went, you know, they missed games around the same time. What do you think she needs to do, um, you know, when she's working her way back? And what, if anything, you have you seen from her just in these last few days of getting back on the court? Um, she's been great coming back in practice. She brings this spark of energy and um defensively that we need from her and that she's been that's just what she does is what Nika does her aggressiveness um all of it so first things first we just need her to get healthy that's all we ever needed from from everyone who's been hurt um but for her not to be able just to come back and I know she's anxious she's eager she's just ready to go out there and she's gonna put it all out there even if she physically can't she will and I think that's um something that we all appreciate and love from her but at the same time we tell her like hey we want healthy Nika we don't want you know 80 percent or 70 percent Nika we want 100 percent Nika so if you're feeling good um then yeah of course come back but if you're not don't please don't force it um you know your body is everything <clears throat> in the game of basketball so just making sure she's feeling good um and coming out there and just just running the team like she does um another ball handler thank god 
um, you know, able to bring up the ball and just get us into stuff, run plays for us. Um, another great passer, um, another great communicator, um, and just gonna just gonna fill the spots that we need, um, as she always does. A great screener as well. Thank you, Jackie. Hi again, uh, Caroline, this one is for you. I hope you'll humor me with this one. Um, so I wanted to follow up on, on Dorka. You know, she's someone who has played three years of college ball already, but for a different program. I'm just curious as to maybe how her journey to adjusting to UConn, how maybe that's helped you along in your adjustment too. Um, yeah, I think it's definitely helped. Like we came in this summer and we lived together. So we spent a lot of time together. And um, I think just her, yeah, being new here, but like you said, having three years, she kind of already knows like how to play in college basketball. And like, she has a lot of experience in her own way. So um, being able to go to her for things, she gives great advice and being able to help help you through things. But then she's also new. So she's also kind of going through what us freshmen we're going through so I think that was really helpful right and, and I guess does it bring you some sort of comfort to see her you know break out in the way that she does and then after her breakout you know there you go you have you know the the best game of your career here so far yeah I mean I don't think anyone was really surprised when she played like that um against UCLA because she had been doing like playing like that in practice and you could tell that like you're just kind of waiting for her to have a game like that um and then she did so we we're obviously all so happy for her and um she's continued to play really well brilliant thank you appreciate that any other questions for the players any any for carol oh my god <laughs> yes any specifically for caroline <laughs> coach said that Coach said that uh, Paige has really looked like she's coming along very well and progressing. Can you see that in her, not just on how she is on the court, but, you know, off the court, does she seem upbeat, like she's excited, she's getting somewhere? Oh, yeah, she's she's super involved um, in practice, um, still using her voice. She's still in the huddles. If we just have a, a team huddle in itself or we have to run over to there, she just have a crush over to us or whatever it may be, but she's very in tune. Um, and in games as well, you guys will see her screaming, yelling, jumping when she's not supposed to. Um, but even, you know, in her rehab, she's progressing really well. Anything else? All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Avina, Caroline. Thank you. Thank you.